Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is an underrated yet still flawed game in my opinion, and though I agree that it has many rough patches, it was a massive shock to the gaming industry when it came out, one of the most important titles in all of gaming history, and a really fun time by itself. Moving into Sonic 2, it's even better with more expansive and creative level ideas, more cool mechanics, and a better distribution of quality stages. But moving into the third game, there's an even bigger leap in quality. Sonic 3 is an absolutely incredible game through and through, I'll just say that right out of the gate. This is one of the landmark titles in the Sonic franchise that shows why it became a gaming sensation for so many decades, and it's really the only one that I've played that, in my opinion, can seriously compete with the 2D Mario games. But why is this game streets ahead of all the other Sonic games I've played? Well, first I'd like to say that the stages are pretty much all amazing without a single big dip in quality. Angel Island, Ice Cap, and Hydrocity Zone all stick out to me as some of the most well-designed Sonic stages I've ever played, and yet all the other three are almost as good as well. Angel Island is an incredible introductory stage, on par with Green Hill Zone from the first game, yet I might actually prefer it due to the incredibly cinematic showdown with Eggman and the much more interesting jungle theme. Hydrocity is amazing simply because it's a water level that I like. I was actually dreading this one because the version of it in Sonic Mania infuriated me. Not because the stage was bad, but because the damn boss kept draining my lives and making me go back to the start. But in this version, the bosses felt much fairer to me, and I breezed through this level without having many issues at all. This stage is so fun due to the many pathways you can take, either above or below the water, which is yet another thing I love about this game how many options you have in every single stage. You'll be rewarded for your platforming ability with a more exciting or easier path, which is an idea that has been in this franchise from the start, but this game takes it much further both in terms of design and cosmetics. Ice Cap is an example of how this game utilizes amazing physics-based platforming tools to shoot you through the stage in a satisfying way. You have so many cool things to use in this stage, such as ice walls and springs frozen over that you need to burst through, and swings that you have to dash into to flip around. All of these are combined in a phenomenal way, with the whole stage being very fun. And that brings me to the one issue I have with this game, the difficulty. Maybe it's just that I'm not that great at Sonic games, but it feels like this game has some unfair death traps, ridiculously tight movements that are expected of you on the fly, and projectiles coming from every direction from certain annoying, hidden enemies, all of which contribute to quite a few unfair deaths. I never died over and over and over again at the exact same part for the majority of the game, but Ice Cap Zone is a big example of how I love this game's design, yet find it very hard to keep playing due to the annoyance of having to restart. I feel like making things fairer or even just removing the lives would make this game an absolute masterpiece. This is a common issue in many platformers of this time, so I don't blame it too much, but it was the one thing that truly bothered me throughout my playthrough. That is apart from the DAMN BARRELS, that's right, in Carnival Night Zone, an actually great stage, there are these barrels on which you have to rock the d-pad up and down to move them. However, this is not made clear at all, meaning I had to look on a super old message board to find out how this works. This is something that could have been tweaked in my opinion, either by being made more clear with some sort of subtle tutorial, as Super Metroid did with its wall jumping for example, or by having this motion be more common in the game. Since you don't ever, ever use this before this point in the game, or even, heck, in the entire series, it's not fair to assume I would guess to do that. It's mostly my fault, but it did annoy the hell out of me. But in general, that's all that bothered me about this game. You have some amazing level designs that don't dip in quality whatsoever through the whole game, mostly good boss fights, and really only a few unfair bits. The power-up system is yet another standout, with you getting really helpful abilities from each kind of shield, such as a dash with fire, an extra jump with lightning, and an air bubble with water. This is a phenomenal idea that gives you a really great use for all of these, and I hope it's used more in other Sonic projects. We also get another set of cinematic moments, which are always a treat, with the zone transitions showing us how Sonic gets from one level to another, being particularly impressive both for the time and now. 
This is something I think more 2D platformers should do, because it's a great way to make the world feel more alive. And finally, we arrive at the presentation. The graphics are some of the absolute best on the whole Genesis, with so many colors, effects, beautiful levels, creative designs, and fluid animations that all help the game have a more expressive feel. I actually love the change to Sonic's design here, even though I know it's strange and out of place. But really, the star of the show is the music, which is just... come on. This is one of the best gaming soundtracks ever, where practically every song is a masterpiece. The game may have fantastic design, beautiful visuals, impressive mechanics, and interesting ideas, but the music is what stands out as the best part of the package, and it means that Sonic 3 is a worthwhile product even if you hate the gameplay. I love this game a lot, and even though I am not a fan of the many strange and unfair little bits that make the game more difficult, presentation and gameplay are some of the finest of the era, pushing the Genesis to an unbelievable degree in order to achieve a unique, fascinating, phenomenal, and generation-defining game. 4.5 out of 5.